Welcome into Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Downey, and as promised, it is time for some OTA winners and some losers as well. Now, if you watched our video yesterday, you knew this was coming, and you probably have a good feel for who our first winner is. That is wide receiver Traylon Burks. I remember doing this video last year. Burks was on the loser's side. Not the case this year. Everything coming out in the media from players, from coaches, has been immensely positive for Traylon Burks. And that's a pretty damn big deal for Tennessee because they desperately need him in the wide receiver room where it's Burks and Kyle Phillips in the slot and Nick Westbrook-Akina and not a whole lot else I think we really trust there. Year one was not a great year for Burks. We can be honest and upfront about that. You know, you're banking on more than 444 yards when, fair or not, the expectation was, hey, you've got to replace A.J. Brown. Ryan Tannehill, meanwhile, offering some praise for his number one receiver. Traylon's grown a lot. He's flying around. He's moving fast. He's moving efficiently. He's coming out, and he's working. He's in shape. All great things. He's been able to catch the ball and get open his whole time here, but all the little things that go along with playing the position and being able to see the field and understand the whole concept, which is just a route, how he fits in the whole picture, I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. Now, if you were like me, you are fully convinced the Traylon Burks breakout is coming. I'm trying to get into my Dynasty League, etc. If you are excited about him, show it by liking the video right now. The more likes we get, the more likely it is that Burks has that big-time breakout year. So like today's video for me right now. Let's go to rookie running back Tajay Spears, the third-round pick out of Tulane. Derrick Henry's at OTAs. He looks sharp as well, by the way, but, ah, you know, it's, Karen, it's kind of expected there. Spears, meanwhile, also drawing some high praise from media present at the open portion of OTAs. It's a big deal. Adding another player like Spears behind Derrick Henry can keep him a little bit more fresh. You know, you don't necessarily want to give Derrick Henry 300 carries every single year. Even if it's only like 270, getting Spears involved is valuable. He is a dynamic, if undersized, football player. Had awesome production at Tulane. He offers some third down value. He can catch the football too. can give Derrick Henry a breather there. And he's able to put together some explosive runs in a offensive-focused OTA environment where, you know, you're not tackling, it's you're not really doing all the contact stuff. So at 10-fever offense, even though, as we'll get into, defense actually playing pretty well. But there has been some growing Tajay Spears hype, so we'll show him some love on this video. Now, I'm sure you guys have been watching OTAs just as closely as we here at Chat Sports have because you love the Titans. So sound off in the comments section. Name an OTA winner, one I've have mentioned, will mention, or might not mention, at the pinned comment of today's video. If an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Go name that Titans OTA winner for me right there. Arden Key is next up, the free agent acquisition for Tennessee. In general, kind of sounds like the defense having a bit more success, which might be a statement on the quarterback play, which we will get into, I promise you, on today's show. But I'm excited for Arden Key this year in Tennessee. I think he has a chance to make a significant impact. The last two years in Jacksonville and in San Francisco, there have been flashes. Not, you know, the maybe double-digit sack guy the Raiders thought they could maybe luck into when they took him out of LSU all those years ago. But he's been better than what he was in Vegas. Low bar, I know. But I've been impressed by Key. Uh, he had a couple near sacks, or would have been sacks, because, you know, you're not actually tackling the quarterback. Harold Landry coming off of injury, there's going to be a real chance for Key to take over for that Bud Dupree role as one of your top pass rushers at outside linebacker. Good news, everyone. Titans hats are on sale. Some of them up to almost 50% off. Tons of styles, varieties, etc. So get yours today. Chatsports.com slash Titans hats. That link, the clickable one, will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Different colors, different fits, different brims. The draft hats are available. And oh, by the way, also available is the Titans t-shirt hat and combo. This is the best deal out there. It's almost 50% off. It's 22 bucks for both a hat and a t-shirt, which you can't find one of them for 22 bucks most of the times. Every now and then there's one, maybe 15 bucks. It's a fantastic deal. Go get yours today. Chatsports.com slash Titans hats. 
We mentioned Jeffrey Simmons briefly. I say I want to give him some love because I've always been a fan of Simmons' game. I think this is one of the best young, if not the best, defensive tackle in the NFL. And no surprise, he's been chirping some, and he's been playing very well uh, as well. Simmons has been flashing. He looks like the dominant defender Tennessee is paying him to be. I fully expect another fantastic year in all pro caliber season out of Jeffrey Simmons this upcoming campaign. Finally, Ryan Tannehill, at least on the winner's side, I should say. Not the first time we've put him on the winner's list for an OTA video. This type of environment where there's not really a ton of pressure, where, it, where he's in a bit more of control than a normal game, really favors Tannehill's strengths and weaknesses pretty well. He looks sharp. He's making throws. He's connecting with Traylon Burks a lot, too, and that is significant. The numbers weren't great last year for Ryan Tannehill. I do think it is also fair to say... Was the supporting cast that good? The offensive line has regressed for two years in a row. The leading receivers were Robert Woods, Chigo Conquo, and Traylon Burks, and none of them were as good as A.J. Brown was. You, 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 he got hurt, of course, as well. I don't know if it's going to be 2020 Ryan Tannehill, but I bet you get closer to at least 2021 Tannehill. I think this will be a better season for Tannehill if the offensive line, which we'll know more about in camp, holds up its end of the bargain. So what is your confidence level right now in one Ryan Tannehill? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1, of course, is the low end. 10 is the high end. And remember to make sure you guys are subscribed for more free Titans videos. All off-season, we're kind of in the pre-preseason. It's the, the weird part where like the actual off-season free agency trades are all pretty draft are all done but we're still put, p pumping out content for you guys and the people watching you guys watch right now you're the diehards so get more videos hit that sub button right now to the losers and i don't want to be mean but in life there are winners and there are losers and it's not panic time for will levis it's way too early for that we've only just hit june but he's not been the best so far and that's okay he this is always a, a pro this is always a project player um he himself has said, yeah, I didn't have my best stuff. There have been missed throws, bad decisions, a lot getting thrown on his plate, a lot he's learning, adjusting to. It's an adjustment period. But the traits are there. It's some of the consistency accuracy stuff isn't always there, which was the exact same thing in Kentucky. So thinking it was going to be changed in like a month is would, would have been asking too much. Here's what Levis told the media after OTAs, or at least the uh, Wednesday open portion of OTAs. I know I have more opportunities tomorrow and the next day, so I'm not going to beat myself up. High standards is the name of the game. It's not to beat yourself up. It's to motivate you to go out there and to perform to the best of your abilities. Look, it's very clear right now that Ryan Tannehill is much better than Will Levis and much better than Malik Willis, who, swiping a third-round pick a year ago, is now mostly relegated to some backup stuff. He's competing with, Tanne with Levis. Will is struggling with the same issues of just being late on throws, and that's a real killer for Mike Vrabel. For Will Levis, though, and dating back to Malik Willis, too, this is a patience project. You cannot expect him to be ready to go in June. Maybe even until June of next year is a more realistic timeline there. You didn't really have the patience with Malik Willis that you needed, which is fine. It's your team. You need to have it with Will Levis. You invested even more in him at quarterback. You need to be patient and not just expect him to be overnight top 10 quarterback. Like, you know, maybe it would be taking the number overall pick. It's not, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. So is Will Levis going to be a franchise quarterback? Not necessarily this year. Down the line. Why for yes and for no in the comments. Brief on the next one. Some players not practicing. Uh, look, I'm not that worried about it. It's OTAs. It's voluntary. It's just not that big of a deal. Some notable players, though, who are out mostly due to injury. Kevin Byard, the exception. I'm talking about him yesterday. I'm not concerned. Caleb Farley coming off of injury. Christian Fulton missed the first week, came back, but wasn't practicing on Wednesday. Harold Landry, Trayvon Wesco, Danico Autry, all notable players who are not participating at this stage, practicing of OTAs, but they mostly fall into the hurt or veteran category, so I'm not that worried about it. One player I'm a little more worried about we'll get to here in a little bit, but... I want you to be mean in the comments. We'll call it constructive criticism. Name a Titans OTA loser so far. Head down there. Sound off for me in the comments. 
I do want to spend some more time on Dylan Raiden's here. As Look, he's coming off of injury. He's banged up. But he's also not part practicing, emphasize that part, at OTAs, which puts him in a very tough spot. Look, Raiden's was a second-round pick. The goal, the expectation, the hope was that by now he would be a clear and obvious starter somewhere on the offensive line, at guard or at right tackle, and that isn't the case right now. The Titans overhauled their offensive line. Andre Dillard, Peter Skaronsky, Daniel Brunskill all come in. Nicholas petit Friere beat out Raiden's last year. I think he's once again kind of in that backup if he even makes the team status. The sooner Raiden's can get back out there without rushing, the better chance he can do to earn a roster spot this year. Now, before we go, we will show Brett Kern, the Pro Bowl punter, some love. The longtime, longtime Titans punter has called it a career. So type in BK to show him some love in the comments section. 